Hugo Cabernet was not just a composer. He was a poet. He was a philosopher. Many of my sessions for Cowder had nothing to do with music, but explanations of the Greek text of the New Testament, or a uh, explanation of the I Ching. There was nothing he didn't know. My relationship with Cowder was both as a student and an apprentice. It was the highlight of my life. used to a concert experience so it was it was exciting but nerve-wracking I saw the panel of judges looking at me and each one had their name tag in front of them just to remind me that I was playing for Richard Stoltzman Jeannie Baxter I um, it was really an honor to play for them One of the unique things about this competition is that, it, that um, Hugo Cowder is a little bit more unknown. So it wasn't like the Nielsen competition where every flute player is familiar with the Nielsen flute concerto and every clarinetist is familiar with the Nielsen clarinet concerto. It exposed us to two brand new pieces that well, we are not familiar with, but they are beautiful. And so it's a great way not only for us to compete, but for us also to be exposed to new repertoire that we can pass on to our students and to other flutists. It's a clean slate. No one's ever told them how to play it. It's just directly their connection with the music and different lights came out. The Solar Suite is such a good co competition piece because it's, it's, it's like a clean slate. You can do with it whatever you like, especially the first movement, which is titled Improvisation. And he mentions in the preface that every note should just be played as long as the emotional intent that you feel it should have. So it was very interesting playing around with it and seeing how it suits you as a, as a player. For me, when I had first heard about the competition, um, of course, I hadn't, I hadn't heard about Hugo Cowder uh, before in my life, ever. <laughs> so for me, I was expecting that um, when we had these pieces that were required uh, to be learned, uh, to be performed in the competition, I was assuming that I was going to be coming across something along the lines of the second Viennese school, somewhere in the vicinity of, say, Schoenberg or Webern or Berg, and was pleasantly surprised in finding something that was more medieval. Because of the modal context that it's composed in, um, it's very different um, from any kind of music that pianists are usually familiar with. 
There are a lot of repeated notes in Cowder's music. Bom, 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 bom. He's expecting changes of color as if you were saying words. It's got a different kind of simplicity to it than Mozart does. Mozart has um, this sort of, uh, I would say, classical era Europe in it where there's more curls on the buildings and details to the arches of architecture and things like that. And then Hugo Cowder's music is, um, I think, slightly more minimal than that. I think it requires less uh, texture to accomplish the same joyful kind of ideas that it, it brings across. I think one of the most incredible uh, facets of Cowder's compositions are that he does not incorporate bar lines um, in his work. So as a pedagogical tool, it's really incredible to sit there and have to actually expand your, your brain to think about what the measures are and what the music actually is doing. Also, it's got these this Asian kind of things in there with pentatonics, which uh, pentatonics aren't necessarily Asian, but you know they're found uh, probably one of the simplest, uh, most commonly occurring scale in the world. He incorporates pentatonic scales a lot, but it doesn't have a pentatonic feel. He, in one piece, will go from a medieval feel to a very pastoral feel to a countryside dance, and then all of a sudden it'll sound almost as though there are church bells happening in the accompaniments. But there's no other composer that these works remind me of, and it's, especially if you want to program it, that's really nice because it, it is something completely different in style and in character to the other works in your program. He will be one of those people that people will look back on later and say he was probably one of those first few people, the pioneers who brought back this sort of tonal, modal understanding of music again that makes people want to sit down and listen to music and enjoy it for what it is.